Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Mystical. Today, I am bringing you a 10.2.5 and hopefully beyond for the rest of Dragonflight Fist Weaver PvP guide. So, this is going to have everything you're going to need from what race to play, what stats to use, all the way to what talents and how to play around certain spells against enemy teams. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. I want to start off by talking about why you would want to play Fist Weaver over caster mistweaver and cast and mistweaver is normally normally my specialty that's what i play but fistweaver has grown in popularity this expansion and that is because it's just better there's no other way around it fistweaver you have damage you don't have to deal with interrupts the most important thing you have to deal with is knowing how to manage your mobility against classes that can kite you like frost mages or warlocks that are good at kiting that's pretty much the big skill cap that Fist Weavers have. They've hit gotten hit with a lot of nerfs over the past, what, two or three seasons, but they are still much better than Cast and Mist Weaver. And until that day, Fist Weaver is probably going to be a way to go for both twos, threes, and solo shuffle. Every single bracket, Fist Weaver is better than Cast and Mist Weaver. You bring a lot to the table with your damage, with your healing, and everything in between. I do want to mention that even though Fist Weaver is strong, I would not recommend it for anyone that's new to mistweaver or new to healing in general unless you play like a melee dps and you're comfortable obviously doing damage and being in melee range it is much different than any healer you will ever play and that's kind of why i like it it's much different than any healer in the game right now it is melee range doing damage kicking people in the face which is appealing to some people for me personally i was not i did not like it at first i still am kind of weird about it now i will start off with races i feel like i always start with alliance so i will start with the horde races there aren't many options when it comes to horde again when it comes to best race optimal race there really aren't you know that many differences between them but the racials do kind of compensate if you're gonna play horde your two options are orc or undead that i really don't think there's any other option uh for fist weaving especially so orc is really good because it does bring hardiness it is nerfed in pvp they nerfed it uh, significantly um in pvp but it's still solid you still get the stun reduction which is nice because you are in the middle of the fight so you're gonna get swapped to a lot of the times you're gonna get stunned you're gonna get micro stunned so orc always a really good option i always recommend it if you're you know new to fist weaving or anything like that i would highly recommend it uh, there's also undead so undead is really good because you have will of the forsaken and this will get you out of fears and with the meta with being demon hunters i have a fear you have warlocks that are meta and they have a fear even you know evokers i've seen a lot of devs some preservations but mostly devs they have sleepwalk which is a fear charms from warlocks so the seduction from the suck pet they that you can get out of that with will of the forsaken so because those are meta classes and meta specs undead is actually a very solid option i would almost argue it's probably the second best race to play it's probably the best race to play right now because of the meta so it strictly from meta as far as both alliance and horde i actually think undead is the best race um but there's a different race on alliance that's actually just an overall i think better choice but if you're gonna play horde i would recommend undead orc is also a much safer approach but it's still good as far as alliance goes you do have more options i feel like you always have more options when you play alliance i would say human is pretty solid but you're going to be playing either gnome or night elf in my opinion or dwarf i think one of these three options is really good i mentioned that undead is the second best race i think overall i think gnome is the best overall best race to play for both alliance between alliance and horde because of escape artist it's a one minute cooldown that gets rid of all of your roots and snares i mean you you can't ask for more when you're fist weaving your biggest weakness when you're fist weaving are roots and snares and this race gets rid of it every minute so death knight chains of ice frost mages that can frost nova wind walkers that can slow you like any slow at all you just get rid of which is is it's very clutch in a lot of situations so i'm known personally on my fist weaver monk and i think it's the best race to play now that's not to say night elf is also good you do have shadow mouth the thing is about shadow mouth um you can really only do i mean you're doing it to avoid cc you don't need to drink on a fist weaver so you don't need to shadow mouth drink so that's not a big deal. You're mostly going to be using Shadow Mouth to avoid CC, which is good. But because you're fist weaving and you're in the middle of the fight, a lot of the, a lot of specs have AOE damage, and they'll normally just break CC on you. So that's why it's really hard to CC uh, fist weaver unless you're playing as a druid with like Cyclone. A lot of CC is just going to break instantly on you. And then you do have the dwarf Dark Iron Dwarf argument, which is decent. But again, it's a two minute cooldown, 
Um, there's not a lot of Affliction Warlocks. Feral Druids are really bad. Assassination Rogue isn't nearly as good as Outlaw or Subtlety. So I just feel like it's not that insane to play Dwarf or Dark Iron Dwarf. Which is why if you're going to play Alliance, I'd recommend Gnome. Just to get rid of slows. Especially, you know, if you're a little bit newer to Fist Weaver. Or I, I just think in general, Gnome is the best. Um, just being able to have one extra way to get out of a slow or is amazing or night elf if you uh, honestly aesthetically you know should, you know night elves are a little better but the shadow is also pretty decent it's completely up to you all right i have logged on to my gnome which is just my full-time fist weaver and i'm going to quickly talk about what stats you want to play it's pretty straightforward actually you're going to run haste versus crit mastery it's really that simple i would recommend just going haste versus on every single piece of gear personally i think i have 44 percent haste yeah a little bit overkill but no other stat does anything for you. It's it mastery does absolutely nothing. It does zero for fist weavers. So there's not even it, there's no point in having any any mastery at all. Crit is decent, but it's nerfed in PvP. I, maybe there's an argument to get a little bit more crit just because you do lose stats from haste. But in general, you just want haste verse, heavy haste verse. I also you know socket for haste verse, and then as well as enchants, you're gonna go haste on the rings. And wafting devotion for that bonus haste uh, on the weapon. As far as embellishments go, again, you don't have a lot of options for fist weaving in PvP. I feel like you have more options in PvE. But in PvP, I just go double verdant tether. Just that simple. So whenever you do you use any of your healing spells, you have a chance to give one of your teammates a versatility. And the thing about this uh, this effect is that your teammate gets more versatility the closer you are to them. So obviously so if you were playing a cast and misweaver right and you're just chilling from, from far away and you're healing your teammate maybe they get the bonus from verdant tether but it's going to be less versatility than if you were in fist weaving range or melee range of your teammate so again it's just an extra bonus and i run two of those by the way i run two i run verdant tether on the neck and verdant tether on my ring so they get the the the, the effect stacks so that's really, really good. I At first, I thought this was bad because a lot of people have verse, but then I realized a lot of people don't actually stack verse. They stack like their haste or mastery that they need or crit if some people are running crit, but it's mostly haste or mastery. And a lot of people are tr actually dropping verse uh, in some cases to like 26, 27%. So they actually don't get the stat reduction that a lot of that, you know, you see me running, you know, 44% haste. I'm losing like 20% haste after a certain point. So Definitely run two Verdant Tethers, really, really good. And that brings me right into Tier Set. So Tier Set, I think four sets actually pretty decent for Fist Weaving. It's not, again, it's not the best, but if you take a look, I'm sure I have a healing breakdown here. So four set does about 4% of my healing. Again, if you're going to use four set, you're just, you know, it's usually two to 4%. I don't think it does any more healing like for any rounds, 4%. Helm. Shoulders, chest, gloves, and then legs just make haste verse crafted gear. And that's pretty much what I run. And then I'll just show you my gear breakdown just in case there's any questions or you want to know exactly what you want to run. This is exactly what I run on my monk. And I've been, again, 2,500 plus MMR, shuffle twos, threes, uh, rent, being fist with this. So helm, tier set, my neck, I go haste verse and I put verdant tether on it. And I socket that three times with the energized uh, Semerald, you Semerald with uh, Haste Verse as well. You could probably go High Verse, Low Mastery as well if you have too much Haste like me, but that's just what I run. Shoulders, Tier. The, so the Cloak is from, you convert the Cloak PvP piece to the Tier. You can convert non-Tier pieces to Tier pieces, if that makes sense. Um, you just bring this to the Converter and the catalyst and then you can make it and then this has haste higher haste than verse so i just brought it to the catalyst and convert a pvp cloak to a tier cloak chest i run my tier and then i run reserve of intellect enchant on that wrist this might be overkill this is the engineering wrist where you can put one stat on it but that one stat is like crazy so i you needlessly complex wrist guards from engineering i socket it for haste and verse it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Gloves tier. My belt is crafted with haste verse as well. Put a shadowed belt clasp on it tier three. Um, legs crafted with 177 intellect and 131 stamina. I go with stamina instead of mana because again you're fist weaving. You're in the fight. You're gonna be taking damage. So I think the more health you have, the better. Um, gloves or boots again crafted with haste verse. 
rings, haste verse, haste verse. One of the rings has the second verdant tether because you have two embellishments on um, equipped at the same time. And then my trinkets medallion. And then I've been playing around with badge, but I think you're better off just playing with insignia for the just for the baseline haste and like the proc. I mean, it doesn't give me much haste, you know. So you can play either. I like the one minute cooldown from the badge because it lines up with Chigi. So I think that's kind of nice. And then my weapon is haste verse, the verdant gladiator's staff with a uh, wafting devotion enchant on it. So that is my gear. If you have any questions about gear, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. I am a I'm a stat nerd in this game. And one of my final end games is to like min max my stats to like perfection. So like, any questions about gear, let me know. We're really happy to answer any questions about that. All right, let's start with the left hand side, which are the monk talents. I'm just going to try to explain what talents are important and what you really don't need to pay attention to. The number one button that I think is, I highly underutilized it was disable. So what this is, is this is a 50% slow you put on somebody and it gets refreshed anytime you do a melee hit to them. So this is disable. If I use rising sun kick, it gets refreshed. A tiger palm, I black out kick. It just gets refreshed. Obviously, it goes away when you know somebody freedoms or something. But it's still really, really good button to press. Whenever you see that there's no freedom or no you know way to remove a slow, press it. It costs a little mana, but I think it's still worth it. Left hand side, nothing too crazy. Reduce the cooldown of leg sweep, which is good. Grace of the crane, Fer ferocity of Juan. So this increases all damage you deal. And then you go into fast feet, which increases the damage of your rising sun kick by 70%, which is obviously mandatory. And then it increases the damage of spinning crane kick, but you don't really use it that often. And then the one weird thing you are going to notice is, oh, well, first I want to talk about, so close to heart increases all healing taken from all sources when you're near them within 10 yards, which is mandatory for fist weaving because you're next to your teammates at all times. So they just get 8% increased healing. But I know that summon J server statue is going to look weird. And I promise... It won't once I show you what you do with it, but just take statue. You could drop it if you want. If you really don't want to play statue and like I can show you what happens over here, that's fine. But you could put it into make four brew stronger. Or if you want to make four brew stronger, you could like take one talent away from Tiger Tail Sweep maybe and like put it into make a stronger um, four brew. But this is what I've been running. It's been working pretty well. Um, I really like it. There aren't many talent, other talents that you can move, but this is this is what I like for the monk tide. Now, these are the Mistweaver talents on the right-hand side. I'll show you the more traditional build, and then I'll show you my build, which is a little different that I've actually liked just a little bit more, but I'll show you the more traditional build that a lot of Fistweavers are running, and this is pretty much it. So you start off with your Enveloping Mist. You come on the left-hand side of the tree, get your teaching to the Monastery, and again, I'm going to try to talk about really important talents to pay attention to for like healing rotation and stuff like that. So teaching to the Monastery is probably one of the most important buffs that you want to keep track of when you're fist weaving so what this does is tiger palm causes your next blackout kick to strike an additional time stacking up to four times and then blackout kick now has a 15 percent chance to reset the cooldown on rising sun kick and that 15 percent chance counts for all the blackout kicks i hit so it's stacking up to four times so what this means is you rising sun kick you tiger palm now i have what one two stacks three stacks of teaching the monastery and then i blackout kick and then i reset my rising sun kick so that's what that means so it's really really important buff to have i do have a weak aura if you want it i don't know maybe it's distracting for some people but i think it's really important so this just literally just tracks the stacks of the teachings of the monastery uh which is really important and then this is the little trick with statue so this is really handy because without this you have a really really weak life cocoon but what you do is you have statue right and then what you do is you play common coalescence and what this is is each time you soothing mist the absorb uh amount of your next life cocoon is increased by two percent stacking up to 50 times so you're going to put statue down and then what you're going to do is you're just going to weave in your soothing mist, your rotation, and then the, the statue soothing mist gives you stacks of common coalescence. So that way, when you use life cocoon, you actually have a decent absorption shield on it because without this talent, it's it's really weak. Even in twos and threes without high dampening, your life cocoon is going to be weak. And in shuffle, your life cocoon is going to be absorbing close to nothing. So it's very important to just weave in those soothing mists. That way your statue gives you stacks and then your life cocoon actually does something. And then the bread and butter, obviously, is you're going to want to play, you know, agent teachings. You're going to get your Chi G, which is I'll explain in a different part of the video. But this is just a, your major cooldown for fist weaving. Essentially, if you have Chi G up, 
not, no one's really gonna die. I mean, tr I mean that's just how I feel. I really feel like no one dies when Chi-Gi's up. It's just such a strong cooldown. And then you uh, ancient teachings. Anytime you press Jade Fire Stomp, I believe it's they renamed it Jade Fire Stomp or Essence Font, you're gonna get the ancient teachings buff right here. And that's what's gonna make it. So your Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and Rising Sun Kick heal for the amount of damage they do. And then left hand side here, this is the fun part about fist weaving. So you get a lot of bonuses with your Jade Fire Stomp. So again, we talked about it, but it activates your teachings of the monastery or your teachings, your ancient teachings buff that makes it so your damage converts to healing. But then you also get two additional talents that make it even stronger. So you have Ancient Concordance, which makes it so your Blackout Kick strikes three targets and have an additional 10% 10, 10 chance to reset the cooldown of your Rising Sun Kick while within your Jade Fire Stomp. So you need to be standing in it. And then you have the buff right here, which makes it so your blackout kick strikes three additional targets. Jade Fire Stomp now has 100% chance to reset more often um, when you're standing in it. And then your Tiger Pump strikes twice, which is amazing. And then your Spinning Crane Kick heals three additional targets. Not really useful in PvP. It's I would recommend, honestly, Spinning Crane Kick to be off your bar. You very, very, if ever, will use it. Um, but pretty much bringing these two, three talents together, actually these one, two, three, four talents together, I'll show you what you can do. So your Ancient Teachings gets activated from your Jade Fire Stomp. Your Tiger Palm hits twice because I'm standing in it now, right? So now I get two charges of Teachings of the Monastery instantly. And then you can Rising Sun Kick and Blackout Kick. And that Blackout Kick hits everybody. My Rising Sun Kick resets. So you can see my damage here. This is what your damage breakdown is going to look like. You're going to ancient teachings is going to be on here uh, on the healing, but everyone's at full health, so it's not going to show up. But ancient teachings or blackout kick passive, you could see it hit 12 times, <laughs> but I only hit it once. So it hits three additional targets, and I had four stacks. Three times four is 12, and then the normal blackout kick right here is what hit once. So I hit this once, but it hit four times. Because it hits, it hits your initial target and then anyone around it. And then you have your Rising Sun Kick, which I hit twice because it got reset. And then your Tiger Palm, I cast it twice but hit four targets. Because again, you're in your Jade Fire Stomp. You're Tiger Palming, which normally without your Jade Fire Stomp, if you're not standing in it or if you don't have the buff, you're the Awakened uh, Jade Fire, you're not going to be able to do this. But because I am, I Tiger Palm once, I get two stacks. Tiger Palm again, I can Blackout Kick. And then a rising sun kick because it reset my rising sun kick. So that this right here is what you need to focus on uh, to really master this uh, fist weaving is to make sure that you're uh, obviously trying to stay in your jade fire stomp as much as you can, and then building up those stacks, the blackout kick stacks, using it when you have rising sun kick on cooldown, and then trying to reset it. And then this is a fun talent right here. I actually this is this is probably my favorite talent in the whole build, which is T of Plenty. So Thunder Focus T, which again I will have a section about. Of course, in the video, but this is when you press Thunder Focus T, you get two random buffs between, I think it's Expel Harm, Rising Sun Kick, and Enveloping Mist, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so you get two additional um, Rising Sun um, charges from your Thunder Focus T, and it's just random, but it's still, Enveloping Mist is amazing because it makes it instant, you get an extra charge of Rising Sun Kick, and then obviously Expel Harm is amazing to use for survivability. And then that is pretty much it. Um, Shaylin's Gift, again, Shaylin's Gift is pretty good. Um, you build up these charges while you're in combat. You, I play A lot of people play Shao House Lessons for the buffs. I think Veil of Pride is also really solid, but this is a really good build for when teams are going you because what you could do is you can put your report LOS, and if you're being targeted, let me put this on my bar, and if you're being targeted, you could port, Shaylin's Gift, port back. I also don't want to forget to talk about Rising Mist. This is really, really good, obviously, for Fist Weaving. So this makes it so when you Rising Sun Kick, it heals all of your teammates with Renewing Mist and Velvet Mist or Essence font on them. And then it extends those hots for by four seconds up to 100% of their original duration. So if your Enveloping Mist is, what, seven seconds long, six seconds long, it's not going to extend it farther than, than six seconds. But you can see I, I Rising Sun Kick... It goes to six seconds and it just keeps doing that over and over again. Really, really, really strong passive to have. Now that is the more traditional build. I'll show you the build that I've been running and it's completely getting rid of your Shaylin's Gift and talking and going to Secret Infusion into Invoker's Delight. So this makes your one minute cooldown GG even stronger. Um, and what this does is Secret Infusion after you use Thunder Focus T, 
you can you gain a stat based on what spell you use for the first charge. So most of the time you're going to be using a Rising Sun Kick. So you get versatility. So right now my stats are a little wonky just because I'm in just very awkward gear. I could try to use my Fist Weaver set, but I have 33% haste. 34% verse. If I Thunder Focus T Rising Sun Kick or Expel Harm, I should get verse. And if I use it on Renewing Mist, I get haste, uh, which is really, really good. Um, and then Invoker's Delight makes it so when I Chi G, I get 33% haste for eight seconds. So right now I have 34% haste. And on my other monk that I mostly use for fist weaving, I have 44% haste. It is absolutely inf insane. So I'm going to Thunder Focus T Rising Sun Kick. My versatility goes to 49%. Which is amazing. And then if I use Chi G, I have 77% haste. So I basically have no uh, the lowest GCD you could probably possibly have. And you just absolutely just crank with it. I mean, it, it affects your hots too. So your hots are ticking faster, your melting mist is stronger, your renewing mist are stronger. It's just overall just it's just such a powerful cooldown i like this a lot more this is why i use the badge as well because it, it just makes chi g that much better next we have pvp talents which there's really there's there's really a few that you're going to want to rotate between i'll talk about the ones that i think are absolutely mandatory so in my opinion peace weaver is a mandatory pvp talent in almost any situation because most classes now, most specs now, have some form of magic damage, magic CC. I would say the only comp you'd probably not use this is like, like Outlaw Rogue Windwalker or Outlaw Rogue Arms Warrior or like Arms Warrior Windwalker. You know, something where it's just two physical, you know, classes and specs where physical damage, they don't have any, phys they don't have any magical CC because even feral druids, they have cyclone that you can immune. And then even then versus the windwalker and the arms warrior teams, like if you're playing against an R druid, you know, it, you can immune cyclones with peace weaver. So I think peace weaver 99% of the time mandatory. I would also say the same for Zen spheres. Zen spheres is really good. You, if you're really good at managing it, it's you just see how powerful it is. Again, so Zen, Zen let me t quickly just say, Peace Weaver makes it so your Restoral and your Revival are the cooldowns reduced by 50%, and then it makes anyone that's healed by it immune to magical damage and effects for two seconds. So let me put more mode on so I can show you the buff. And I will press Revival. Boom. Everyone's immune to magical damage and effects so cc really you could use it while stunned if you're using restora which you're probably going to be using 99 percent of the time you can immune cc so cyclones polymorphs hodges you know anything like that you can immune damage chaos bolts anything like ray of frost any anything any ma anything magical so that's why you i say it's basically mandatory zen spheres makes it so you have two spheres with uh zen spheres you could put one of each up at a time so what you could do is you put zen sphere on an enemy and when it's on an enemy, that target takes 10% more damage from you and your teammates and then do 10% less damage to you, which is amazing. So if you're being trained, you want to put this on whoever's hitting you. If you're targeting, a, you know, if your whole team is targeting somebody, which you probably will, you always want to make sure your sphere of despair is on it. And then you have the second sphere, which you put on your teammate. So sphere of hope makes it so your teammate takes 50% more healing from you, which is just amazing, you know, so... Keep that in mind, really, really important. So I think those two are basically mandatory. This third one really comes down to what you're queuing into and more importantly, what you're queuing with. Um, eminence, I'll start off with Eminence. So this makes it so you could port while stunned. It It's very tempting to take Eminence and it's it's really good if you're playing with like a team that can't get you out of stuns. Like if you're not playing with a Rep Alley or like a Demon Hunter that can reverse it then yeah, you might want to play Eminence to be a bit safer. But if you're playing with more tanky specs and tanks that can, or like specs that can keep you alive while you're stunned, you might want to just drop Eminence just because it's a little bit too defensive. There's better talents uh, that you can play. So it's, it's a good choice if you want to play defensive, but it's not really a mandatory talent. You also have, let's see what else we have. Zaz and Focus C, we don't need Grapple Weapon. Again, this is really good versus Warriors, Rogues, Anything like that with, that uses melee weapon. I think those are the main two. DKs are also really good. So anything like that, grapple weapon. I would mostly play into warriors and rogues. Outside of that, it's it really doesn't do too much versus much of anything else. Demon Hunter is okay, but they can backflip out of it. So, you know, if you can, if it's if backflip is off cooldown and you grapple weapon and they meta, it's actually pretty, it's a good choice. 
And then that's kind of... Oh, yeah. And then we have Mighty Ox Kick is kind of troll. It's... <laughs> You could use this in twos if you're playing against like a Demo Lock or like a Destro Lock, Shadow Priest for like an extra interrupt. But this just knocks people in the air. It's an extra interrupt. I It's good in twos, uh, not used too often in threes, especially since Blades Edge Arena hasn't been around. Now, if Blades Edge Arena ever comes back, this is actually a good talent because you can knock people out off the bridge, which is amazing. Alpha Tiger, probably going to be your your your. This, these are pretty much your go-to three talents right here. Um, Alpha Tiger makes it so when you hit a new target, you gain 20% haste for eight seconds. And this can only be used on that target once every 30 seconds. And that target can be anything. And when I tell you anything, I mean anything. So I'll show you right here. I'm just going to hit this. I'm going to show you my haste as well. So right now I have 33% haste. I'm going to whack this guy. I have 60% haste. I gain 20% haste. Simply by hitting a new target, you can see that they have the debuff now for 30 seconds. And what I mean by anything is Shaman Totems, Warlock Pets, Hunter Pets that they summon, Demo Warlock Imps that they summon, Shaman Totems that they that they spawn, you can get this buff. So this is essentially, if you could rotate it well and hit their you know, correct, correct targets, you could actually probably, you could have a, a permanent 20% buff. So I'm going to, this is going to fall. I'm just gonna re I'm just gonna refresh by hitting a new target. This it's gonna fall again. This guy doesn't have the debuff. I'm gonna tiger palm and get the buff again. And then this guy, 30 seconds is over, so I can hit this target again. I'm gonna hit it again and refresh it. So you could just you could literally have a permanent like 60% haste. And then the final one that you could play is Fey Accord. This is actually one of my personal favorites, and it's it's I feel like it's a bait because. I feel like it's really good, but it's it, I don't think it's as good as Alpha Tiger. But what this does is this reduces the cooldown of Feyline Stomp by 10 seconds. So it's now it's a 10 second cooldown. And then it also applies a 60% slow to the target. Now, again, it's not... Like, if you're playing against double melee, you're obviously not going to need it because they're, you're you know, you're all going to meet in the middle of the map probably and not, not much is going to happen. So they're not going to move much, but it's really good in my opinion versus casters like mages and warlocks, especially after the freedoms go away and you could just, you could just slow them. Did none of these get the uh, debuff? That's all right. It's weird like that. These dummies are, it's kind of weird when you, when you uh, play the slow, sometimes it doesn't, oh yeah, it sometimes doesn't hit, but um, let me see if I can get a hit to hit now. Yeah, right here. So there's a 60% slow, which is really good. Um, but it's also reduces the cooldown of 10%. So it's also good versus mobile targets. So I play this versus casters, mages, warlocks that can port, you know, anything shadow priests that like move around the map, even though they don't have a whole lot of mobility. But like any, or hunters as well, any kind of caster where they have a decent amount of mobility, this slow is really good. It, but more importantly, it reduces the cooldown of failing stomp by 10 seconds. So if I fail and stomp right now and I'm just and they they like the mage blinks away and I didn't get a reset on my fail and stomp, which kind of sucks. I mean, I'm just gonna try to build up some damage here and then I'm gonna fail and stomp when the mage is over here. And hopefully I can get a reset on my on my Jade Fire Stomp. That's that's kind of when I play it. But if you're playing against double melee, especially with like a shaman on the team, Alpha Tiger is just the way to go. You can get this buff off of anything 20% haste is crazy zen spheres makes your team do 10% more damage and 10% less damage to you from the other team and you also have peace weaver to keep your team alive so those are the pvp talents that these this is the three you'll play 99% of the games i just want to talk about the basic healing rotation and the damage spells that you're gonna be you're gonna be pressing so i've already talked about it but jade fire stomp Feinline Stomp, this is what's going to activate your buff that makes it so Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and Rising Sun Kick heal your teammates. So you're, this is your activator. I would recommend not using Essence Font just because it costs a lot of mana. And Jade Fire Stomp is, is just a better way to, to use it, especially if you're playing um, the talent that makes the slow Fey Accord. So you use your Jade Fire Stomp to activate your Ancient Teachings. And you're going to Tiger Palm. First and foremost, Rising Sun Kick off cooldown. That is like the number one thing you want to do. Rising Sun Kick off cooldown. And then you're going to Tiger Palm to build up your Ancient Teaching stack. You're going to Blackout Kick. You're going to press Rising Sun Kick. That, that is the basic healing rotation. That will get you 1,600 probably. <laughs> I mean, if you if you could just put your Zen Sphere on the target, activate your Feyline Stomp, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. 
you're already you're ahead of the game. All right, so that that's gonna get you pretty far. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to start weaving into your rotation is your Thunder Focus T. And this, again, I, I talked about it briefly, but what you're gonna to wanna to use Thunder Focus T on is Rising Sun Kick. It's it's pretty, it, what it does is it makes it so the cooldown is reduced of your Rising Sun Kick by nine seconds. The other situations you're gonna to wanna to use it, you could use it for Enveloping Mist as well, for the Instant Enveloping Mist. Um, that's a good option, it's, a, it's solid. So if someone's starting to fall behind, you don't have an Enveloping Mist out, you can use it to activate your two set and your rapid diffusion over here to put your, you know, um, renewing mist on them. So definitely opt to do that as well. And then sometimes if I'm being targeted, I'll use Thunder Focus T for an expel harm on myself because it's a really insane heal and you get the low cheek cocoon. So that's really, really good. But you're going to start weaving your Thunder Focus T once you get your damage rotation down. So we're going to start off the same way we did last time. Let's put our Zen Sphere on ourselves. Zen Sphere on our enemy that we're targeting. We're gonna activate our ancient teachings, right? We're gonna rising sun kick, tiger palm, blackout kick. Okay, nice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna thunder focus T. Nice. We got a we got we have a lot of rising sun kicks right now. We're gonna thunder focus T, rising sun kick, tiger palm, rising sun kick, tiger palm, rising sun kick, blackout kick, rising sun kick. And you're just gonna do that over and over again. Your the priority, it's it's just a priority when it comes to what to press. Always it's always gonna be rising sun kick. If you don't have it, you're gonna use your Feyline Stomp to activate your into teachings. You're gonna tiger palm to build up stacks, and then you're gonna blackout kick when you have two to four stacks. All right, next you want to start weaving in your manatee into the rotation and the really, really good thing about fist weaving is mana really isn't an issue a lot of the time as long as you use manatee at the right time. So what manatee does is you consume one stack of manatee and that restores 3,600 mana and reduces the mana cost of your spells by 30%. You get this buff for one second for each stack. So if I if I consume all 13 stacks of this manatee, I get 13 seconds of 30% reduced mana, which is absolutely freaking insane. So <clears throat> it's really important. Pretty much you just want to use it before you you, fail, you jade fire stomp. That, that's literally it. Um, there's nothing else to it. Um, if you find yourself using Enveloping Mist outside of Chigi, you might want to do a little quick Enveloping uh, Manatee into an Enveloping Mist. But outside of that, yeah, you just use it before you jade fire stomp and then mana, Manatee is fine. So with, with when you weave in manatee, it's the same rotation. You're gonna put your Zen Sphere on your teammate, and your teammate and the enemy. You know whichever one your team's hitting. You're going to put a little slow on them with disable, fade line stomp, and you know just do the same exact rotation as as you before. Sometimes team, uh, you know healers will start to get good at dispelling Zen Sphere. Just press it when you can. You can weave in a Chi Wave too if you find that you have a little downtime irritation or if the you know the team is starting to cut away from you, just throw in a Chi Wave if you want. It doesn't do the most damage. It doesn't do the most healing, but it's better than doing nothing. And I've mentioned Chi G a few times, but this is your primary healing cooldown for fist weaving. So what this does is you summon Chi G and this makes it so your Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, and Spinning Crane Kick give you stacks of Chi G. And when you get to three stacks, you have an instant belping mist. That symbol. Uh, you also are immune to slows and roots. And it also gets rid of slows and roots when you activate it. So keep that in mind. If you find yourself rooted and you need to get out, GG, perfect answer to it. And yeah, I'll show you what that's like. So what you're going to be wanting to do with GG, your rotation, nearly exactly the same. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Instant Enveloping Mist, Rising Sun Kick. That's what I that's what I tend to do um, because you the, the Enveloping Mist will put Renewing Mist which also puts two set on the target. So same exact rotation. Let me get a few. Let me get a quick little stack of manatee here just so it's a little bit more realistic. Three stacks seems pretty good. So again, Zen Sphere on myself, Zen Sphere on my teammate, manatee, Jade Fire Stomp. And let's just let's just start doing our damage here. And let's just say they start using their burst cooldowns and you kind of want to deal with them. It's, you know, it's just they're using their burst cooldowns. You're going to chi -gi, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and you Enveloping Mist. And then you Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist. Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Instant Enveloping Mist. It's really that simple. And remember, that renewing that Enveloping Mist will put two set on because of Rapid Diffusion. Makes it so Enveloping Mist applies Renewing Mist. And that Renewing Mist gives that teammate two sets. So you'll be healing them for, I believe, what is it? I think it's 
what, 15%, I believe, in PvP? 15% uh, extra healing. So always really important to get the, the your enveloping mist out on whoever the team's hitting. And that's that's pretty much all there is to it with Chiji up. All right, so let's put it all together. I'll probably say some spells I haven't talked about before, but this is what the full rotation looks like for Fist Weaver. I want to make sure I get it all right, so I'm just going to put this on my bar. Put Statue down because you want to get those stacks of Common Coalescence. Put Zen Sphere on myself. Put Zen Sphere on my target. I will start channeling Soothing Mist on, you know, teammate, whoever I think is going to start getting taking some damage. It doesn't really matter. The only goal is you want to start getting stacks of common coalescence. That's pretty much it. Um, at the start of the game, you don't have mana T, so you're just going to press your your Jade Fire Stomp. You're going to start with a Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, you get the reset. Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick. Didn't get the reset, so we're going to Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick again. We're going to Fade Line Stomp again. We're going to refresh our Zen Sphere, and let's just say it's, you know, there's pets around, so we just need the Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. If they start to kite away from the pets or enemies, you Tiger Palm, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. Obviously, it just depends on if, you know, single target or cleave. And if they start using their burst cooldowns again, we Chi-Gi, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Instant Enveloping Mist into a Rising Sun Kick. Refresh our Zen Sphere, Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, Enveloping Mist. I'm starting to take some damage, maybe. I will port. I will Shailun's Gift myself. I'll get a nice little buff. Buff doesn't really matter. I'll port back. And we just continue doing that. And then make sure you keep refreshing your disable on the target. Because obviously, if they don't have freedom, they're just going to be slowed 50% permanently, which is freaking amazing. And yeah, we use our uh, Thunder Focus T there for Rising Sun Kick. So we get the cool, uh, the reduced cooldown on it. So we Tiger Palm Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick. And we just keep doing that over and over again. If we need to refresh the buff, we use our Jade Fire Stomp, refresh our Zen Sphere, keep our Zen Sphere on our teammates. And that is the full rotation. What when do you want a blackout kick is a really good question. I think that you're fine to press it. Like if you Feyline Stomp and then you you Thunder Focus you Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, and you have four stacks right now, that's a really good rotation. And then you have Rising Sun Kick again. But if you Tiger Palm Blackout Kick, if you have a lot of pets around you, so let's just say you're targeting like a hunter or a death knight that has a lot of pets, that blackout kick is gonna cleave off onto the pets to make the rising sun kick obviously have a chance to reset even higher so if there's pets around i would just go for rising sun kick tiger palm blackout kick and that because you get that blackout kick cleave on everything and then you rising sun kick if you're mostly focusing on single target and like no one is immediately in danger i would use my i would activate the ancient teachings and then i would tiger palm tiger palm rising sun kick and then blackout kick and then you get the guaranteed rising sun kick even though it's single target damage, if that makes sense. So if there's pets around, because again, you only have two stacks, right? It's, your blackout kick's gonna hit three times, but you're hitting off pets. So if you if there's pets around, just go for a tiger palm, blackout kick, get the rising sun kick. If it's single target, I would tiger palm, tiger palm, get get to four stacks of teaching the monastery, and then blackout kick. Hopefully you get a reset on your rising sun kick. Sometimes you won't. That's okay. Just continue to. If you don't get the reset of Rising Sun Kick, it's fine. Just continue using your Tiger Palm Blackout Kick and just hoping you get a reset. Now, when it comes to healing cooldowns, it's always uh, something that Mistweaver has always lacked. It's not any different for Fistweaver either. You have about two or three major cooldowns that you have. I've talked about Chi-Gi extensively. Use this. This is normally one of the first cooldowns I use, but be careful with Chi-Gi. You cannot waste Chi-Gi. That, that is like the number one tip for Chi-Gi is please do not waste her. So if you're playing, again, you're stacked. You're going to be stacked on the enemy team. You're going to be probably getting CC'd with things maybe you're not used to getting CC'd with or something like that. For example, Shadow Priests. They will very rarely get fears on a cast and Mistweaver because of how far away you play. You can, you know, normally you're probably playing Eminence and they can't get to you. Well, when you're Fist Weaving, you're, you're going to get feared, right? So you don't want to press Chi-Gi and then have the Shadow Priest Psychic, you know, Psychic Scream and fear you away. And then all of a sudden your Chi-Gi... You only have three seconds of Chi-Gi and you have like two globals to like heal and recover. You don't want to do that. So Chi-Gi, you want to use after CC, ideally, you know, after a team stuns you, after a team fears you, after a team cyclones you, um, anything like that, I would highly recommend doing. You you really cannot waste Chi-Gi. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind and Mistweaver, whether you're casting Mistweaver or Fist Weaving, it doesn't, don't have a lot of tools to recover um, when they fall behind. 
Next up, Life Cocoon. Talked about this too. So you're going to be building up your stacks of common coalescence with your soothing mist from your statue. And what uh, soothing, um, what Life Cocoon does is it's just a giant absorption shield that you put on on target. Um, it applies your new mist and enveloping mist and increases all hots by 50% from you. So those, you know, the enveloping mist and renewing mist are insane. Uh, you just press Life Cocoon when you're falling behind. That's that's essentially it. Um, I very rarely Life Cocoon myself. So because you have so many, and I'll talk about this uh, in the next section, but you have a lot, a lot, a lot of defensive cooldowns as a Mist Weaver. Even though they're weaker now, it, you know, you still have defensives that you can rotate. So I would recommend using Life Cocoon on your teammates, especially if one, they don't have cooldowns or two, if they're trying to greet it. And I hate, especially in Shuffle when they're trying to greet it. It's like, I don't know why you're doing this to me. I don't know why you hate me, <laughs> but yeah, I would use Life Cocoon mostly on your teammates, but obviously, you know, if you're going to die, you got no cooldowns, you want to press on yourself. And then we have Restoral. So this makes it, so you could use it while stunned. It dispels all diseases and poisons, and it's just a big AOE heal. You can pair it with Peace Weaver. It makes everyone that's healed by it immune to magical effects and damage. So Magic CC, Magic Damage, makes everyone immune for two seconds. Really good for if you're stunned and you you know, you know want to immune a Polymorph or a Cyclone on yourself. You can Peace Weaver it, heal your teammates, and also make yourself immune, which is really, really nice. Um, Shailun's Gift is a cooldown. It's, it's, it's a cooldown. Um... Most of the time with this build, you're not playing Legacy of Wisdom to reduce the cooldown or the cast time of it. So most of the time, you're just going to be porting, Shaylin's gifting yourself, porting back, and then just going back to doing damage. I very rarely try to cast on a teammate unless I'm playing against like a double melee comp that doesn't, you know, I could, I'll roll Shaylin's gift my teammate and then roll back. You can do something like that. But if you get kicked, it's very, very awkward. So if you ever find yourself having to do that, um maybe like roll rop and then shaylin's gift and then roll back but i feel like you use so much there so i normally just use it to heal myself for defensive cooldowns i feel like this is kind of the skill cap of miss weaver and fist weaver in general you have a lot of defensives they're all they've all gotten nerfed in pvp but still you want to use them correctly so let me talk about let's see we have diffuse magic so this reduces all magic damage you take i think it's 40 percent pvp yeah 40 percent and any dots you have go back to the enemy enemy team or uh, whoever casting them. So if you play, if you have a stable affliction on you and you press diffuse magic, it'll actually reverse back to the warlock, which is pretty cool. Um, but use this when obviously when you see magic damage come out, pretty much everything has magic damage. So rep Halley wings, um, a bomb limb from DKs, obviously chaos bolts from warlocks, any mage, any mage damage, anything like that. So diffuse magic when you see any magic damage go out. Ideally, if you could do it before stun, that's even better. But obviously, you know, anything, any casters, anything with magic damage, I normally press diffuse magic first. It only lasts six seconds, which is something I want to keep in mind and want you to remember when I talk about the other defensives. It's not a very long cooldown for the duration. So it can feel, it's just a little, it's, I feel like it's one of the weaker cooldowns that we have. Uh, next up, we have Fort Brew. So this, this is a six minute cooldown. And if you don't play the Iron Shell Brew, uh, or if you if you do play Iron Shell Brew at six minutes, you could also reduce it to four minutes with Expedition Expeditious Fortification. Um, either way, it increases your health by twenty percent and reduces all damage you take by twenty percent. Um, yeah, six minute cooldown. Use this. Uh, one thing I do want to know is it lasts fifteen seconds. So Diffuse Magic lasts six. This lasts fifteen. I normally press four Brew when I feel like I'm the target and I'm going to get stunned. So 15 seconds is a really long time. It's really good at like delaying goes if people are trying to get like the perfect go on you. Like if there's a rogue team and they're trying to get the perfect kidney shot on you, this can delay that go by 15 seconds. And then maybe by that time you have trinket or port or something. So I would normally use Fort Brew against, you know, any damage where I feel like the stuns are going to happen and I need the extra health because you have, you have a lot of healing spells that your Fort Brew is, uh, or your Life Cocoon is based off of your health. Uh, expel Harm has talents based off of how much missing health you have. So if I feel like I'm going to be the target and there's a stun about to happen or I'm going to have to use healing out of the stun, I'll press Fort Brew. And then I'll talk about mobility after Port. Uh, it's, it's you know, obviously it's one of your biggest defensives, right? So I guess I'll just talk about mobility in general. So Port and Roll are another thing. So this is just your mobility. Um, port obviously if teams are targeting you you could you could port los heal yourself and then just roll 
you don't want to kite too much though for fist weaving. So the, the tricky part about fist weaver outside of rotating your defensives is to also make sure you use your mobility well. Because if you use all three rolls to roll away, right, from the enemy team, there's going to be like, okay, we can't hit you. We, we're going to hit your teammate. And now all of a sudden you have no rolls and you got you to gotta like run back and then maybe you get CC'd. So try to have a balance between your using your mobility and like kiting because you're gonna you need that mobility to hit your enemies. Um, but I, I normally one of the first defensives I use is port, and it's it's really it's a lifesaver. You just most teams will just swap off of you um, if you port. And then I think the last one is dampen harm. So dampen harm is this lasts 10 seconds. So again, it's longer than diffuse magic. This reduces all damage you take. I think it's nerfed in PvP, isn't it? By 20 percent. Oh, I guess not. 20% to 50% with larger attacks uh, reduced by more. So any hard-hitting spells like Chaos Bolt, uh, Mortal Strike from Warriors also hits pretty hard, I feel like. So Dampen Harm, use, again, I try to use that before a stun. I try to use it when I see major cooldowns going out. It's just make sure you just rotate them. The biggest takeaway from using your defensives well is just don't overlap them. You know, so if I'm fist weaving and I'm like, I'm, you know, I, I a lot of damage is going out. I'm a chi right? And then let's just say, okay, chi has gone, right? And then you see a Warlock casting Bolt on you. I'm probably going to Diffuse Magic. Um, and let's just say I don't have Diffuse Magic anymore and we're playing against a Rogue Lock or something and they have a Kidney Shot coming in hot. I'll probably just Fort Brew. You know, it's a six-minute cooldown, but it'll keep me alive long enough. Um, and then let's just say I don't have Fort Brew or anything like that. I'll just press my Damage Harm. So most important thing is to try not to overlap your defensive cooldowns because Fist Weavers can die obviously it's kind of hard sometimes with the comps they play but they they are a liability and they can be a kill target so just rotate your cooldowns correctly next up are macros so there's some pretty good macros that we have for fist weaving i'll go through my macros if you want there's i don't use anything crazy um so there's uh trinket 13 and 14 this just makes it so i don't have to drag you know if i swap trinkets it's gonna put my trinket 13 on my bar it just makes it so I don't have to keep dragging it over and over onto my bar. Arena one, two, three macros. These are the macros you want to use for fist weaving. I will link these in the description. These are like the mandatory macros that you want for fist weaving. So this makes it so you can blackout kick and then target your teammate and then go back to blackout kicking the target that you were last targeting. And if that doesn't make sense, I'll explain it to you. I'll make sure I have all of these on my bar, but you use it for blackout kick. You use it for tiger palm. Where's Tiger Palm? Let's see. You use it for Tiger Palm. And then you also use it for Rising Sun Kick. So keep that in mind. Very, very important in the Tiger Palm right here. So if I'm doing damage, right? And then I Tiger Palm and I Chi G and I get an instant bumping mist, I need to heal myself. It takes a lot of time to swap back to the target. So you just what this macro does is it just targets your last target and you keep doing damage. And let's just say I have to target myself here. That's okay because I could just blackout kick and just target my last target. I can do the same thing with, with blackout kick or tiger palm as well. It just targets my last target. Very important. Very, very important for fist weaving because it takes time. If you don't have those macros, you, you're doing damage. You're throwing a hot on yourself and then you have to like click. It, it just takes too much time. You have to click the right target. Yeah, it's just not it's, it's just not good. It's not efficient. So those macros are for blackout kick, tiger palm, rising sun kick, which is really important. Um, taunt macros i recommend having taunt macros i have taunt for specific units and then also for just in general pet taunt um i think i do i should yeah right here so this will taunt arena 123 pet really good for breaking cc on you if you time it right and then that's really that's really it i don't i for fist weaving specifically there's nothing too too crazy when it comes to macros um obviously you have the generic you want it to spell you have kick one i've kicked one two three Life cocoon macro. This one right here is really important. This makes it so you can't accidentally life cocoon to somebody that isn't there. So you can't accidentally cocoon yourself when someone's mind control, they're dead. Like if you RG, you don't accidentally life cocoon yourself if you're targeting somebody that's dead. So I would recommend that macro as well. And then, yeah, I have to spell one, two, three, I believe. That's the life cocoon macro. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it all when it comes to, yeah, right here. Here's the spell one and two for quick dispels, which is really important. And yeah, that is it for macros. Nothing to oh tiger's list as well. I have a tiger's list for my teammates, which I would recommend um, getting comfortable using your tiger's list because that's you know if you get slowed or if your teammate gets rooted, you're gonna want to use that as fast as you can. 
but that is it for macros. Yeah, nothing too crazy. If anyone has an awesome Fist Weaver macro or just a macro in general, share it. I would love to know uh, what you guys are using. Add-ons. I'm not going to talk about add-ons too much just because I have a whole video going over my UI. But when it comes to add-ons, I for PvP specifically, I don't use that many. Um, I use Diminish. So what this does is it shows the... Oh, okay. It shows DRs on myself and the enemy team, which I think is really important. It also shows it on nameplates as well. So um, I would highly recommend. I like it having it on nameplates. I don't think it'll show right now. Yeah, it should right there. So it shows DRs on nameplates, which is amazing. Easy frames is just my frames right here. Uh, Omni CD, so this tracks your teammates' cooldowns, which I think is really, really important because you don't want you don't want to be blind. You know, that's like the most, especially for a healer, you, you need to know what your teammates' cooldowns have. Um, and then that's like, I mean, Gladius X. This is what tracks. Um, this will track burst cooldowns and kicks that the enemy team has, and then S Arena. So S Arena is like the main arena, you know, UI that I use. People use Gladius. Some people use Gladius X. Completely fine. Doesn't really matter. I use S Arena. And then nameplate cooldowns and nameplate orders are probably the next, probably two important add-ons that I use. So this, let's see if I can test this real quick. So this will test, this will show important cooldowns underneath nameplates over here. And then this will track nameplate orders. I can actually just show you. This will show like CC. It'll show burst cooldowns or defensives over their nameplate. Really good for just fist weaving in general. And just just be awareness as any any spec healer dps doesn't matter just good for any awareness in arena in general best comp to play uh <laughs> it is no secret fist weaver red warrior is probably your best comp to play as a fist weaver basically what you want to play is you want to play fist weaver rep pally x the rep pally is is vital for fist weaving for pretty much two reasons one blessing of sanctuary and two, Blessing of Freedom. Those are the two spells that your ret needs to have bound for you. And that is like, that's why you have them on the team. So Blessing of Sanctuary, Sank for short, that a lot of people say is, it gets you out of stuns and fears. It's, it's amazing. It's your two weaknesses. Fist, Miss Weaver, Fist Weaver, your weakness is CC. This will get you out of the CC that you that you will be eating while you're in the, while you're Fist Weaving. And then Blessing of Freedom is a freedom that it's it's a spell that makes it so you can't get slowed. If you're fist weaving and you can't be slowed, no one can stop you. You're literally a, like an impenetrable wall. Like you're just running teams down. So you want to play Miss Weaver Ret. I've seen Miss Weaver Ret Demon Hunter. Obviously Miss Weaver Ret um, Warrior. Um, outside of that, Turbo is pretty good. Enhanced Shaman is like a welfare Ret Warrior or, or Ret Pally. Um, Tremor is really solid from Enhanced Shaman. They're a lot squishier than Rep Pallies, but the off healing from Enhanced is actually good. The burst is actually decent. I was playing some Turbo, I think, last week as my Fist Weaver. Actually a decent comp. The Warrior needs to be really solid, though. Your Warrior needs to be really good with intervenes, spheres, parries. Very, very important. Uh, rallying, rallying. So really important to have a good Warrior for Turbo. If you don't want to play double melee, I mean, it. You, I've queued into Ellie Shaman, Boomy, or Frost Mage Boomy or Frost Mage Ellie Shaman. Frost Mage is really good because obviously they have like a ton of slows and roots. And if you know if the target can't get away because the root is slowed, you can have you just punch them in the face. So that's really important. So any comp like that, but I would probably not recommend playing with like an arcane mage or anything like that, just because they're just tough to heal. Rogues and twos is also really good. Your best twos comp is probably with a demon hunter or a rogue, something with consistent stuns and slows that can keep the target in one place or stunned. And that way you can just keep hitting them while you recover if you fall behind. So those are your best comps. Pick a rep alley, find a frost mage or something like that, but probably just red warrior and you'll be perfectly fine. All right, so these are my tips and tricks for Fist Weaving. I did a version of this for Miss Weaver, and I thought I would do this for Fist Weaver as well. I think a lot of people enjoyed the last uh, time. And this is there's going to be some overlap, but there's some Fist Weaving tips that I think are kind of important when you're playing it. First off, similar to Cast and Miss Weaver, Provoke is a really underutilized spell. Please use it to break your CC. You're going to be in the fight. You're going to be next to the pet. You're literally next to the pets that are going to, that are hitting you. So just get used to having a provoke keybind and just pressing it off cooldown. And I mean, it's off the GCD. Press off cooldown. You will be surprised how often you will break a trap, a polymorph, anything like that that can break on damage. 
it will probably you could probably just time it well you know before a stun or before they start the end of the cast from a poly just press provoke taunt pet and you'll be able to break your cc totem stomping is something you should also get used to doing there's gonna be a lot of comps and a lot of teams especially when you get higher rating where they're gonna know that you need to kite a fist weaver it's like the number one thing people say is kite fist weaver well totems can't kite <laughs> <laughs> they can shaman can tie they can try to move their totems but they can only move it so so far and so often so if you find yourself getting kited by like a frost mage or a hunter and you're they're playing with a shaman like an ellie shaman any shaman wrestler shaman ellie shaman and you see a healing stream totem or you see like a healing tide totem yeah i would just roll the way to start hitting it you your team gets the full healing from your fist sweeping when you start doing damage to it. Tip number three, by the way, is the same thing except for hunter pets. If you are getting kited by a hunter, let them kite you because you just swap over to their pet and just start smashing their pet. I mean, PETA might get called on you, but uh, you got to do what you got to do if you want to win the arena. So same with Demo Warlocks as well. If you're getting kited by a Demo Warlock or they port away really far away and they think they finally got away from the fist weaver, their pet isn't as good as kiting as they are. <laughs> you can even, better yet, if you're far away from the warlock or hunter, you can actually taunt their pet towards you if they try to get them away and then do damage to them and start killing their pet. And your team and yourself gets the full healing from your fist weaving. So keep that in mind when being kited by hunters, warrior, uh, hunters, warlocks, anything with the shaman on it. Just swap to the pets or the totems and you can heal your team with it. The next thing you kind of want to get used to is I've had issues with Feyline Stomp where it doesn't go exactly towards my camera or my camera is a little slow. So just make sure you Feyline Stomp in the correct direction and make sure it hits right. Because there's sometimes where I'll Feyline Stomp and I think I'm going this way, but like it, it goes in a completely opposite direction. So just make sure your camera is faced. Maybe it's a me issue and not anyone else's issue, but just make sure your phalanx stomp, you face the correct direction that your, your enemy is in. Because if you phalanx stomp this way and then the mage goes this way, you're going to lose out on a lot of damage and a lot of healing if you can't get back to your um, Jade Fire stomp for the extra buffs. Sometimes it's annoying. So just keep that in mind. Peace Weaver is a... Very important spell to use when you're fist weaving because it can stop damage and CC on you. And it's really important to not underutilize it. So some things that you can do with fist weaver or with peace weaver is you can immune the hunt from demon hunters. I mentioned it a lot, but if you the demon hunter is mid cast or in the middle of the air and you and you peace weaver or you revival and you have the peace weaver buff before they hit you, you immune the damage and the dot. So their burst is completely gone. Finally, this is versus Windwalker Monks. So they are really annoying because their Fist of Fury can parry if they're playing the talent that makes them parry when they when they Fist of Fury. You want to? I use Incap uh, to interrupt it. That's what I do. So if you're ever playing against a Windwalker, I've seen a lot of Windwalker Demon Hunter, Windwalker Rogue, Windwalker Warlock, anything like that, and you're you know forced to hit the the Windwalker or something like that. Um, I use I use Incap to interrupt Fist of Fury. That way you can continue doing damage. Because if a team, if an enemy team is using parry or some kind of evasion, they can stop your damage completely. And I want to talk about the last tip is to always be doing damage. Always be doing like I cannot stress this enough. Fist Weaver isn't like other melee specs like Melee Pally or any or like priests that can do damage from range. It is unlike any other healing spec that has done damage. If you are not doing damage, you are not healing. It's, it's as simple as that. So when I tell you that if you're being kited, but you know there's a melee hitting you, you gotta hit your hit the melee on the way to the caster because if you're just if you're just tunneled in on that caster and you're like I'm not gonna target anyone besides this one person, you're gonna lose or you're gonna fall behind a lot and you're gonna have to use cooldowns. So hit whatever you can. I mean, it doesn't even need to be a melee. If a warlock ports over here. And you're over here and a shaman put a totem down over here or like a hunter's pet is right here or you can taunt a pet to, to you do it because you you have to be doing damage to heal there is no other option you will not be able to get away with like casting oh they're too far away let me just cast you, your your casting does nothing you, you have no mastery you, you have no cloud of focus your healing spells will be doing nothing unless you're doing damage so try to get into that mentality that's why if you're new to miss weaver or like new to healing it's a little bit it's a lot different than any other healer you've ever played and then one thing one section i want to talk about is a section on what spells to look out for when you're fist weaving so like i've mentioned if you are not doing damage you're not healing and there are actually ways to counter fist weaving with defensives 
right? So I'm going to talk about a few defensives that are out there and I you need to either you need to swap immediately and find something else to, else to hit. So the first one is warrior parry. This makes it so they parry obviously melee attacks. If you see a warrior parry and they're really good at positioning and they're they're keeping their back away from you and, and anything like that, um you need to swap. So usually whenever I see whenever I see a warrior parry, I'm swapping to the other teammate. I'm swapping to a totem. I'm swapping to a pet. Anything besides that warrior, you need to swap off of. Next up is rogues, and they have actually two ways to avoid your damage. I think it's Veil of Midnight, which makes their cloak give them a hundred percent dodge chance, and then they also have evasion, which also gives them a dodge chance. So you could hit them from behind, but if they're doing if they, you know, do being correct, they'll try to keep your, their back away from you again. Um, you need to swap immediately. Whenever you see cloak or evasion, I normally just swap immediately to a separate target and I try not to hit them because again, if if teammates or if enemy teams are dodging your, your damage, you're wasting your stacks of damage and then you're also not doing any healing because you're not doing any damage. So rogues, warriors are really annoying. Windwalkers I talked about when they use their fist of fury and they're playing parry, um, when they fist, you're not doing any damage, so you are not doing any healing. So you need to in-cap that. The Fist of Fury is what I try to do, and then continue doing damage or swap, immediately swap off and start hitting another target. Blur from Demon Hunters is actually the most insane defensive versus Fist Weavers because not only is it a damage reduction and a dodge chance, it's, I, I, it's omnidirectional, so they can dodge 360 around them. So you can't get behind a Demon Hunter and start doing damage to them. You have to, when you see Blur, you need to immediately swap off of the demon hunter and start hitting something else. I, again, I keep saying it, pets, totems, uh, you know, the healer, anything. You just cannot hit that demon hunter because if you're doing, if you're trying to do any damage into those abilities, you're not doing damage, which means you're not doing any healing. Some immunities, bop, bubble, and ice block. Those three, you will not be able to do any damage to them. So you will not be doing any healing. Finally, one weird thing is silence from DKs and from Shadow Priests. So it's a little weird. The interaction is weird with silence. You can still Feyline Stomp when you're silenced. So you can activate your Ancient Teachings, which, you know, obviously is your, you know, what's converts your damage to healing. But you can't use any other spells when you're silenced. So you can't use Shiji. You can't use Enveloping Mist, which is weird. But I, that's just how, I mean, it's not weird because you're silenced. But it's weird when you're fisting, right? Because you get silenced, you think you're fine, but you actually can't. So you can activate your, your Jade Fire Stomp or your Ancient Teaching with Jade Fire Stomp. But if you have Chiji up, or if you were trying, if you were playing for Chiji up, you can't press it. So what I try to do for Death Knights and Priests is I'll try to use my Chiji first, and then I'll use my Phalanx Stomp, hopefully when they silence me. And then at least I have the healing from Chiji. And then after the silence, I can throw an Enveloping Mist up. But yeah, silence is a little weird. It's not as deadly as if you're playing a Cast and Mist Weaver, but still it can stop uh, quite a bit of your healing. And that is it for me. If you have any questions about Fist Weaver at all, please let me know. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Hopefully this was helpful for anyone who is asking for the guide or new to Fist Weaving or new to Mist Weaver. I love Mist Weaver, love Castle Healing. I love Fist Weaving. So please let me know if you have any questions. I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. And that is it for me. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.